Hey everyone, welcome back to Above the Yellow Line. I'm pleased to be joined by the driver of the number five Camaro for our motorsports in the Xfinity Series, Anthony Alfredo, coming off a fantastic weekend at Talladega in the Cup Series as well with Beard Motorsports. Anthony, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the show and uh, definitely have a lot of exciting things to talk about. So look forward to it. Yeah, I mean, you had led laps in both series for the Xfinity Series in particular. You had a top three finish. Our motorsports seems to be firing on all cylinders. We talked about this at Martinsville, you and I. I mean, everything seems to be working so well. And with how you're running right now, there's the potential for a playoff spot. What is it like to know that you guys are in a position to potentially be in the playoffs for the Xfinity Series and fight for a championship? That's a great point. I mean, honestly, Martinsville is probably where I felt like we just hit on something and have really been building some momentum. Honestly, all year we've been punching above our weight and uh, constantly maximized our resources to do a lot with a little because we only have a few employees. We don't have many race cars, many parts or pieces, and we certainly don't have any sort of fancy technology like these bigger teams have. You know, we don't I don't get driver sim time. We don't even have an engineer to run offline sim where you could be running setups through just to improve and get better and have an idea what your car is going to do at the track with the limited practice we have. We don't have wind tunnel data, any of the, any of those important uh, things that are crucial to being a competitive team at this level of competition. And uh, to go out there and not only run with those teams, but beat them a lot has been re really rewarding. Uh, and I can only imagine what we could do with those things. Right. But, Either way, it wouldn't be possible without everyone's hard work. I think everyone at Hour Motorsports has been doing their part, and we've constantly just executed well in races. Even when we haven't had the fastest cars, we've just put our position late in the race and um, capitalized on it to come home with good finishes. So when we got to Martinsville, we qualified up front. We raced there all day long and um, just had a really successful race weekend. And Texas was pretty much as good, qualified well, finished top 10, which on an intermediate, it's like a win for a small team. And then uh, obviously Talladega was awesome. We led laps, had a shot at the win and uh, came home third. So I'm just really proud of everyone's effort. It wouldn't be possible without all of our partners, but uh, we're still building and growing. And, uh, you know, we're just going to take it one race at a time like we have been. And that's something I think a lot of people realize, but they don't fully grasp is how different the shop feel is with a smaller team versus a larger team. And again, the fact that this team at our motorsports has a chance to be in the playoffs based on performance, it's a big deal. Uh, walk me through the kind of chemistry that I was here at the shop and, uh, you know, go through the people that help make this possible, the team that you have around you. Yeah. So, I mean, first it starts with Chris Hour and, and his daughter, Mary. I mean, their whole family is our big race fans and, and racers at heart. So they wanted to build a competitive program. And I actually worked with the organization back in 2022. And we had a really successful season, in my opinion. You know, we finished top 15 in the point standings. And that was when our resources were spread pretty thin, um, trying to be a, a three car team, three full time cars, that is. So, you know, this year when Chris called me at the end of the, uh, 2023 season uh asking what i was up to and what i had planned and um i had a, had a few things fall through and um it was a really great opportunity that i was actually excited about because he told me he wanted to be you know a focused one car team kind of put all the eggs in one basket um and get back to being you know competitive because we really did have a lot of potential in 2022 and him and i both feel like we have unfinished business not just together but in the xfinity series obviously of wanting to go win our first race together so I know we could do it with the way we've been running. Um, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity uh, under him is obviously our, our whole team. Right. And uh, Keith Barnwell came on to be sort of the competition director or vice uh, or I guess uh, GM, if you will. And that's awesome because he has a lot of knowledge of just the racing industry and, and the operation of a race team. And he's spotting for me and he's been doing an awesome job. I have really enjoyed having him on the stand. Uh, we hired Josh Graham to be the crew chief. Uh, last year was his first year crew chiefing. He was with the 31 car in the Xfinity series. But before that, he was with uh, Junior Motorsports for, I think, four years or so as a race engineer and, and Hendrick Motorsports for a few years after that. So he's super knowledgeable. Um, he doesn't necessarily have the resources he's used to uh, to use. And, um, you know, so I think it's kind of been a little bit of a adjustment for him just because the, the small team culture is a little bit different. But I, I think he's been doing an excellent job at, um, you know, going back to what I said, just doing a lot with a little by maximizing our resources. So um, 
I've enjoyed working with him too. Um, him and Keith complement each other well. And then everyone on the crew has been doing an awesome job in the shop, you know, not just putting cars together, but at the track, um, doing what we need to do to have a successful race weekend. So um, everybody's meshing well. We have excellent chemistry um, and we're all having a lot of fun together, which is obviously a huge part of it. If, if you're not having fun, then what are you even doing? Because for us, we're, we're all competitive and we want to run as well as we can, but um, it helps when everyone enjoys each other's company since you're on the road 33 weeks a year together and, uh, you know, in the shop back, just trying to get better every day. And another team that's doing a lot with little is Beard Motorsports, a top 10 for you in the Cup Series. What does it mean to be able to get results for a team that doesn't run every single weekend of the season in Cup? It's a huge accomplishment. Honestly, the coolest thing about the Beard family is that when they do go to the racetrack, they believe they can win and they take a lot of pride in that. You know, they don't want to go, even though they do a few races a year, they don't want to go if they don't think they can win. And that's why they prioritize their super speedway races, but they only have one full-time employee and that's Darren Shaw, the crew chief. And he just puts a lot of time into building those cars um, so that they can go have a shot. And I was, uh, you know, honored to be the one behind the wheel at Daytona to put the car in the show by qualifying in on time. And then having the opportunity to get back behind the wheel this week at Talladega and just have a truly incredible weekend. You know, I grew up a race fan because my parents were big race fans and I was watching on TV growing up, went to some races and to have the opportunity to compete at the national level in any of those three national series is a, a dream come true and a, a huge accomplishment. But to pull double duty like that is, um, you know, a, a huge blessing, especially when it goes as successfully as it did a top three in the Xfinity race and a sixth place finish in the Cup Series race was, uh, you know, about as great a weekend as we could have asked for, really, especially with how uncertain those races can be nowadays. Right. So I actually really enjoy super speedway racing and I put a lot of work into studying and preparing for them and being a competitive uh, you know, plate racer just because it's a great opportunity for the smaller teams to go out there and be competitive and run up front, you know, compared to the intermediate tracks that make up most of the schedule. And even in the short tracks and road courses, I think the the bigger teams just still have a huge advantage. So um, to, to be, do that on both fronts with our motorsports and beard motorsports is great. The beard family has been a pleasure to work with. And I certainly want to run a lot more races with them, you know, sponsorship permitting. So we're working on those partnerships, but uh, it was really cool because we had dude wipes on the car for both races and they're my biggest partner. And um, it started off as a one race deal when they first sponsored me when I was a rookie in the national series and to grow it into a flagship partnership on the Xfinity side this year with almost half the season, a cup series race and the entitlement sponsorship of the Martinsville race where we last spoke um, is just, you know, full circle moment. And it kind of is it sets a really great example for other sponsors in the sport and other companies looking to explore motorsports marketing because it clearly works. You just have to stay the course. And, um, you know, with Dude Wipe tonight, we both have just grown together and, um, you know, we have an awesome relationship. So there's just a lot of really great things happening. And I'm really fortunate to, to be in the position I am. Definitely nowhere near where I want to be yet, but I'm certainly well on my way. No, it's been great to see, you know, that partnership with Dude Wipes grow and it just with the success of you and your team this year and how that's blossomed. That's been awesome to see. And they were part of these two races that were very different. I feel like for the Xfinity series, there was a lot of like, you know, racing happening in the cup race. To me, it looked like there was just kind of a lot of waiting, waiting and seeing strategy wise because of the fuel saving situation. What was your take on that? Um, you know, what type of racing do you prefer? And do you feel there's a solution to this at all in Cup, given, you know, what you've experienced on, a, on the Xfinity side of things? It's a great point because, you know, for me, it was something I had to adjust to when the race started. Obviously, in the Xfinity race, it's kind of go, go, go. You know, we had the occasional single file train up by the wall, but really we raced a lot on Saturday. Um, you know, you, you kind of get patient, you know, and focus on making it to the end, running the long game, but you don't even have the green flag stops in the first two stages in the Xfinity series, like you do in the cup series. So that's the biggest thing is everyone's trying to save enough fuel, you know, to take three or two or three seconds less fuel than someone else and just leapfrog them on track position. So we're all just riding around at like half throttle. So it looks exciting to some people because we're three wide, but we're really not racing. We're just cruising around, you know, four seconds off the pace. We were running slower than I qualified at as a single car. So um, I took advantage of that at one point in the race and just drove to the front. I wanted to get track position because it is so hard to pass in the next gen car at super speedways. When there are guys fuel saving, you can kind of, 
find your way to the front by just pushing harder than everyone else. But as we saw at the end of the race, you kind of just stuck in these, uh, you know, trains and there's nowhere really to go uh, late in the going. So I felt like that track position was going to be critical, not only for the pit stops, but to cycle back to the front at the end of the race. Um, and really, I, I don't know what the solution is. The only way to, I think, solve it would be to get at least 10 to 15 cars to decide we're not going to save this week because you have to pit anyways at halfway. It's just about taking that much less fuel. But I was trying to crunch the numbers this morning. And if I'm doing the math correctly, if everyone was, if you had 10 to 15 cars running, let's not say four, but just three seconds faster, even, which is completely reasonable um, based on how much everyone was saving. I mean, we really were four seconds off the pace. If you have a group of cars working together, they'll put about half a track on the rest of the pack that's saving before they pit so oh, wow. if you pit and give up two to three seconds of fuel three seconds is not half a lap at you know talladega super speedway it's it's nothing you know in a in a 49 or 50 second lap at full speed they're all running you know 53 54 second laps saving fuel so it'd be really interesting to see a group of cars try it I certainly wanted to wanted to try it, but you can't do it alone. You need you need a group, and it's just hard to convince everyone to do it. Um, and and I'm not really sure how the track position would cycle out after that. So, um, who knows? Maybe we'll see that you know upcoming in some speedway racing. But the last few, it's definitely just been the biggest thing is getting through those first few green flag pit stops and putting yourself in position at the end. Then we go race. Yeah, putting yourself in position at the end of these races, that's got to be really stressful. And uh, something that I think is very unique with one of your partners, Python, is you have a device that allows you to kind of see some really interesting data in terms of, you know, athlete health and your athlete performance. What is this device? Like, what does it do? What do you see? And how has it helped you perform as an athlete? I love answering this question because Python Technology is a, a relatively new company, but uh, I partnered up with them because... First of all, I'm just a huge nerd about like data evolving myself and like my health and wellness as a person, but obviously as a professional athlete, I think it gives me a competitive advantage to be testing my reaction time, my focus and my mental agility, because that's what you could do with this Python ready device. Um, their new device that's coming very soon uh, is going to be revolutionary in the wearable device industry. Uh, and I've been very big into that the last few years by trying some other um, products out there. And there's nothing quite like this yet or as accurate, I could say, plus some of the other features it has. Um, there's also kind of a safety aspect to it, you know, being able to check your readiness before you get into the race car or after you get out of the race car. Um, and I've just learned some cool things about myself, you know, not only just when I had a good night's sleep, but for me, you know, how caffeine affects my body, how adrenaline affects my body utilizing it in my training routine to see, you know, how my mental agility might deteriorate over the course of, you know, a training session or as I, you know, feel fatigued, because that's something you're going to experience in the car. So I'm actually able to improve that with the device. Um, and it's helped me a lot, which is pretty cool. So I'm excited to see uh, what more I could do with it, especially when uh, their newest device comes out soon. Were you able to look over some data after Talladega? And were there some things that you noticed from that if you were able to look at that data? Yeah, for me, um, my, you know, reaction time was actually as good or better at the end of the race as it was at the start of the race. It wasn't super hot or anything. There it was actually really cool. So I didn't have that kind of mental or physical strain or fatigue that you normally would. Uh, super speedway racing is like high speed chess. I was probably a little more amped up throughout the Xfinity race. The cup race, it was just the very end that got a little more intense once we kind of got into race mode and out of save mode. But um yeah, I mean, there's some super useful data. Um, and one of the really cool things we got to do this weekend was work with the Honor Foundation, which helps transitioning veterans. And uh, there's quite a few Python technology employees that actually, you know, have transitioned from the military or special forces and um, went through the Honor Foundation. So obviously, our uh, men and women that are serving the country give us the opportunity to to in my case, do what I love for a living and keep all of us free, um, live the lives that we do. So it's important for me to utilize my platform and, and help inspire other people and help tell their stories and share the impact of them. So to team up with Pison and the Honor Foundation is really cool because I actually have a Pison device that's kind of printed on all my Sparco racing gloves. And we have multiple pairs we're giving away throughout the year. Well, one of which was the pair I wore in both races this weekend. 
um, that has the Honor Foundation and Pison branding on them. So those are going to be auctioned off through the Honor Foundation here soon, um, which will be really cool. It's for a great cause. And we've got some more special one-off gloves that we'll be doing throughout the year and some more generic ones. We've already given away my Daytona 500 gloves, and uh, there's a lot more to come. It's always a great partnership when we can help our nation's heroes. And I feel NASCAR more than any other sport does a great job at supporting our heroes. So, you know, thank you for the work that you do with the honor foundation. And I truly do appreciate the work that the honor foundation does to help them, our veterans and those who serve our country. I did want to end um, our conversation by asking kind of about the future for you for 2024, particularly with the cup series. I know you've had a few runs with beer motorsports this season. I didn't know if you had anything else in the works. That was unfortunately the last one that was um, concrete. We certainly have Another race or two up in the air. Uh, we want to get the second Talladega race locked down. Uh, and ideally, you know, maybe one other, potentially, you know, say Atlanta, for example. I'd love to run an intermediate race for the experience. Uh, but it's all going to be partnership, you know, permitting. Even on the Xfinity side, we have some open sponsorships available. So um, just trying to grow that and expand our portfolio, which um, as of last year, I actually have the largest in the NASCAR garage of any driver. So I, I take a lot of pride in that already. And we have some amazing uh, brands and companies we're working with um, and to continue to grow that into the opportunity to do more double header weekends and, and, you know, more Xfinity racing, more competitive on that side, continue our, our um, run for the playoffs and be a contender on that side of things is important. Uh, but running the cup races is, is important as well. You know, this weekend we had an awesome showing and to finish so well up front in both races it was a big weekend for, you know, the race teams, our partners and myself, uh, just to show that I could do it and, um, you know, do it in less equipment with smaller teams, you know, on a much smaller budget than these big teams is, is a, a huge reward and something I'm definitely proud of. Well, Anthony, thanks so much for joining us and congrats on a fantastic weekend at Talladega. Thank you.